This morning we're going to pick up where we left off last week, but we're going to continue with Isaac. So if you would turn your Bibles to Genesis chapter 26. Genesis 26 is where we're going to pick up today. And last week saw, we saw that Abraham passed the test of faith. God made an extraordinary request of Abraham. And Abraham obeyed the next morning. We saw that Isaac was a willing sacrifice to lay his life down, to trust his father, the man of faith. And that in the midst of all of that, because of Abraham's faith, God provided. And we saw that God is our provider. And I said last week, no matter what you're facing, no matter what you're going through, it could be a challenge in your home, a challenge with the child, a challenge in your marriage or relationship, a challenge in your finances, a challenge in your physical body, you have to reach the point that Abraham reached. And that is, you have to know and believe and act like and talk like God is our provider. God provides. That's who he is. It's one of his names, Jehovah Jireh, the Lord God who provides. Now, this morning we're going to be in Genesis 26, and actually a lot happens in between Genesis 22 and Genesis 26. Sarah, Abraham's wife, she passes away. Abraham, he goes on to live many more years. God continues to bless him, and then Abraham himself passes away. And so in Genesis 26, we have Isaac, and the story of faith, the story of increase continues with Abraham's son, Isaac, the child of the promise. And at this point in his life, he is at least in his 60s. At the previous chapter, we know that when Jacob and Esau was born, Isaac was 60 years old. So Isaac is well into his life. His father has gone to be with the Lord. He is not with them anymore. And so Isaac is on his own. And Isaac, like his father, must determine, must choose, must decide whether or not he is going to live by faith. And really, that is something that we all face in our lives. It's wonderful if our pastor or our teacher or Sunday school teacher lives by faith, but in each of our own lives, we individually must decide if we will live by faith. The Bible tells us in Hebrews 11 and verse 6 that without faith, it is impossible to please God. We know that the just are to live by faith, that we as the children of God are to live by faith. So Hebrews 11 and 6 says plainly, without faith, it is impossible to please God. And then it tells us that anyone that comes to him must believe, must know, must live like two things are true. Must believe that, number one, God exists, and number two, that God rewards those who diligently or earnestly seek him. You've heard me say that if you believe those two things in your life, it'll dramatically change how you live. If you truly believe that God exists, it'll change how you live, it'll change how you talk, it'll change how you conduct yourself. If he truly exists, then he is alive, then his word is true, the promises of his word are true, the expectations of his word are true. We ought to live accordingly. And the second thing, that if he exists, then he is a rewarder. He is a rewarder of those that diligently or earnestly seek him. If I'm going to live the Christian life, if I'm going to serve him, if I'm going to read the Bible and live by the Bible, then I want to be someone that God is pleased with. I want to be someone that God rewards. In order to experience that, then I have to diligently or earnestly seek him. And in Genesis 26, we come to a place in Isaac's life where Isaac decided for himself and knew because of everything that his father had taught him, everything that his father had trained him to know, the life of faith, God exists and God rewards. And we see Isaac here living like that. And young people, I want to encourage you this morning. You could be a teenager. You could be a young adult. It's great that your parents live for God. It's great that you grew up in church. But at some point, you have got to decide whether or not you are going to live for God, whether or not you are going to live by faith, whether or not you are going to live as if God exists and God rewards those who earnestly seek him. We can only rely on and live off of our parents' faith for so long. There comes a point where we're on our own. There comes a point where they're no longer around. And we are responsible before God. So here in Genesis 26, he's at least in his 60s. His father is no longer around. We find out in Genesis 26 and verse 1, it says, Now there was a famine in the land beside the earlier famine of Abraham's time. So it was a bad time economically. People were having trouble living 
and eating. And we know from earlier accounts in Genesis, when there was a, a time of famine, when Abraham was alive, Abraham went to Egypt. Because of the Nile River, Egypt was always a place of plenty and abundance, even in times of famine. And so we come to Isaac here, and Isaac's plan is the same thing. He's going to go to Egypt. And it says, and Isaac went to Abimelech, king of the Philistines in Gerar. So he's in the promised land, he's in Canaan, and it's a time of famine, so naturally he's going to go to Egypt. But it says, verse 2, the Lord appeared to Isaac and said, do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land where I tell you to live. Stay in this land for a while, and I will be with you, and I will bless you. Of course, we know from the story of Abraham, it took Abraham a while to fully obey, that he didn't even actually leave to go to the promised land until he was the age of 75. But over time, Abraham got quicker to obey, and he got to the point where he would radically obey God. So God has put all of this effort into getting them, this family, into the promised land. There's a time of famine, though, and so Isaac's thought inclination is, of course, like his father, to head toward Egypt. And God says, no, you stay, you be, you live where I tell you to live. And he stayed there, and God says, and I will bless you. It's so important that we listen to God's direction, we listen to God's guidance. God is never trying to mess any of us up. God has a wonderful plan for each of our lives. And when the Holy Spirit moves upon our heart to change something or to do something or to correct something, God's not trying to hurt us. God's not trying to mess us up. God knows the future. God knows what's going to happen. And God knows where we will be better off if we just listen to him. I gave the example last week about how Joyce Meyer tells the story that for years God dealt with her about when she went grocery shopping to put the grocery cart back, to not leave it out in the middle of the parking lot, and how she resisted that for years. But it's this New Testament kingdom principle that he who can be trusted with little can also be trusted with much. If you can't be trusted with little, you can't be trusted with much. It is about stewardship. And so you need to learn to hear God's voice and listen to him. And when he deals with you to address things and to correct things and to, to tweak things in your life, God's not trying to hurt you. God's not trying to harm you. God is trying to get you to that wonderful place that he has for you. So God tells him to stay, to stay put. And that would seem to go against common sense or logic. If it's a time of famine in that part of the world, the best place is to go to Egypt. But God says stay and Isaac stays. And this passage is so wonderful because it illustrates that when you trust God and you serve God and you listen to God and obey God, God can bless you no matter what is going on around you. You can be living in a time that is economically bad and God can and will bless you if you will listen and obey. A lot of times people have this perspective, well, the economy's bad, this is happening, this many jobs have been lost, this is going on, that's going on, this is happening on the news, and so God can't bless me during this time. I can't pull ahead during this time. I can't prosper during this time. I can't go forward during this time. I, if anything, I just have got to do everything I can to maintain where I'm at. When you, like Isaac, walk with God and hear him and obey him, you will experience God's blessing in the good and the bad. God always provides for his men and women who walk with him. So he tells him to stay. And he says, I will be with you and will bless you. And then he affirms to Isaac the promise he gave to his father Abraham. For to you and your descendants I will give all these lands and will confirm the oath I swore to your father Abraham. I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and will give them all these lands and through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed. And then he tells Isaac why in verse 5. Because Abraham obeyed me and kept my requirements, my commands, my decrees, and my laws. We saw last week that the book of James tells us when Abraham passed the test of faith, when he obeyed God, when he trusted God to provide, and went up that mountain with Isaac, James tells us in James chapter 2 that Abraham's faith and his actions were working together 
and his faith was made complete by what he did. You know, at the end of the day, we can say, I believe in God, I believe in Jesus, I believe in the Bible, but God knows what we really believe by what we do. And Jesus taught that you know a good tree by good fruit and a bad tree by bad fruit. And so our faith is made complete by what we do. And so somebody might say, well, Austin, somebody says they believe the Bible and they believe God and they believe in Jesus. Friends, we know what someone believes by what they do. As I said, go back to the beginning. If you truly believe that God exists and that God rewards those who diligently or earnestly seek him, then that will change how you live. And so when somebody does not live as if God exists and God rewards, that tells me what they truly believe. You know, we can say what we believe all we want, but what we believe in our hearts is what affects how we live. And a lot of times there is a disconnect. And so God tells Isaac here in verse 5, because Abraham obeyed me and kept my requirements. What has to happen before you experience increase this year? You have got to obey God. You've got to live a life that is obedient to him and to his word. And we start by obeying the Bible. And so we live by what the Bible says. When the Bible says that we're to conduct ourselves a certain way, then that's how we live. When the Bible tells us that we're to be careful with our speech, then that's how we're to live. When the Bible tells us that we're to live a certain way morally, then that's how we're to live. When the Bible tells us that we're to handle our money a certain way, then that's how we're to handle our money. And when we live that way, God blesses it. But this is the disconnect for many Christian people. They say they believe. They say they believe in the Bible, but they pretty much live their life doing their own thing. God doesn't bless that. And you've heard me say that a lot of times we see that and people will blame God. Well, it's God. God, 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 God. No, it's us. The blame never is assigned to God. The blame never goes to God. If there's a problem, if there's a disconnect, it's not God, it's me. God blesses those. He rewards those who earnestly seek him. Why was Abraham blessed? He obeyed. Why was Isaac blessed? He obeyed. So whatever things in your life that the Holy Spirit has been dealing with you about, you've got to start obeying. You've got to start listening, making changes and implementing those things. So verse 6, so it says Isaac stayed. God told him to stay, and Isaac stayed. Now look down at verse 12. So he obeyed. Verse 12, it says, and Isaac planted crops in that land. So he obeyed God, and then he went to work. He stayed where God told him to stay. He stayed in that land of famine, and then he went to work. And look what happened. It says, and the same year reaped a hundredfold. So he planted crops, and in that year he reaped a hundred times what he sowed, a hundredfold. Why though? Because the Lord blessed him. Stop being so negative. Stop talking as like, well, th this is going on, this is happening in the economy, this is the unemployment number, you know, there's this tax and that tax and, and all of these things the government's doing and, you know... No one's gotten a raise on my job in two years, and no one's gotten a bonus in five years, and I can't pull ahead, I can't prosper, I can't increase. Stop talking like that. God can bless you right where you're at. And if you are where God wants you to be, in the church God wants you to be in, on the job God wants you to be on, and you are obedient and you listen, you obey, He will bless you. He will increase you right where you're at. You've heard me say that we ought to believe for God's blessing and increase this year in such an incredible way that the only explanation is it's God. And doesn't it make it more of a miracle if we're blessed and increased when all around us things are going backward? Doesn't it make it more of a miracle if when unemployment is going up, 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 if we in the midst of that are blessed, blessed, blessed? See? If it's God, he can bless you right where you're at and increase you right where you're at. He worked, and in the same year reaped a hundredfold because the Lord blessed him. Verse 13, the man became rich and his wealth continued to grow until he became very wealthy. 
And so the, the, the writer here, Moses, emphasizes that Isaac became ridiculously blessed. As you've heard me say, so blessed, so increased, so favored, it was ridiculous. There was no other explanation than that it was God, and it got the attention of everyone around him. That is true blessing. That is true favor. That is true increase. But notice, if we think about it, and we think about what we've seen in Genesis so far, Isaac before Genesis 26 is already blessed. Isaac before Genesis 26 has already been increased. Abraham, his father, was incredibly blessed by God. And when Abraham went to be with God, he gave Isaac everything. So before Genesis 26, he's already blessed, he's already increased, and God, in Genesis 26, because of his obedience, takes it to a level that Abraham himself could not even imagine. And see, young people, if you grew up in church, this is what I would tell you. The reason why we don't doubt God and question God and rebel is because if you are the seed, if you are the child of a, a mother and father of faith who live by faith and serve God and is blessed to some degree, whatever that is, God has so much more in store for you as the second generation. But to enter into all the extra and the, the additional favor and the additional blessing that God has for you, you have got to determine to live by faith just like your parents. There's no need for you to start over. There's no need for you to have some incredible testimony of how you were in the ditch and God brought you out. It's great if your parents had that testimony, but there is no need for you to have that testimony. Isaac, in Genesis 22, trusted his father. He went to the top of that mountain fully willing, and in that way, he served as a symbol of everything that Jesus Christ the true Lamb of God, would represent. After that, God blessed Isaac with a wonderful, beautiful spouse. Her name was Rebecca. She was a babe. The Bible says that she was fair. She was, as we could say if you watch Disney movies, the fairest of them all, the fairest in the land. She was beautiful. Then we come to Genesis 26. He's in his 60s and he is listening to God and obeying God and serving God and God is blessing him in a way that his own father, Abraham, could not even imagine. That's the plan. It's not, the plan is not for every generation to start over. So young people, wherever you see your parents at today, Take heart and know that if you will live by faith, not only will you have what they had, but God will take you far beyond it. God will increase you far beyond it. And, and why? Because their life, their faith, their labor, their effort is the seed. And part of that harvest is not going to come until you step into the fullness of all that God wants you to be. The blessing here is on a whole nother level. Verse 14 he had so many flocks and herds and servants, the Philistines envied him. They envied him. And as we read on in the story, we find out that they envied Isaac and despised him so much that they stopped up the wells that his father Abraham had dug. Now think about this. It's a time of famine. And they are so envious and jealous of the blessing of God that is upon Isaac's life that they stop up the wells. This is mean. This is horrible. This is awful. But when you serve God, when you live for Him, and then God starts to show up in your life, there will be static. There will be opposition. There will be jealousy. There will be criticism. There will be people who oppose you and despise you. It's part of it. All throughout the Gospels, in the book of Acts in the New Testament, the Bible tells us that when we serve him and faithfully follow him, there will be persecution. It's a part of it. If you're not being persecuted, you're not serving God. If there's no criticism, you're not boldly following him. And especially in the world we live today, if you do what's right, if you serve God, if you follow God faithfully, there will be static, there will be opposition, there will be criticism. 
We live in a culture in which people want to do their own thing. They want to deny God, to deny God of the Bible, to question God of the, the God of the Bible, to hate him, to despise him, to despise his ways. And yet then when there's a problem or in a national emergency, they then want to pray to the God of the Bible to show up. And that does not work. So of course in your life, when you faithfully follow him and serve him and live for him and he does show up in your life, he does hear you, he does answer your prayers, he does bless you and it is evident to people around you that there is something different about you and different about your life, there will be opposition. There will be opposition. And we see here in Genesis 26 that Isaac didn't let the opposition get to him. He kept obeying God and he kept working. They would stop up the wells and so they would dig more wells. And every time he dug a well, they found water. Every single time. In a time of famine. Every time they dug a well, Isaac found water. And see, when you walk with God and you will keep being faithful, keep being obedient, keep serving him despite the opposition, despite the criticism, despite the people talking bad about you and gossiping about you and trying to hurt you or hinder you on the job or talking bad to your boss about you or whatever it is, when you will keep being faithful and serving God, he'll keep blessing you. You'll keep digging wells and you'll keep finding water. And the people that hate you and despise you and criticize you, they will say, what is going on? I hate that person. And no matter how much I talk bad about them and bash them and try and hinder them and, and post nasty stuff on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram about this person, God keeps blessing them. They keep pulling ahead on the job. They keep getting all the sales. What is going on? Why was Isaac blessed? Because God blessed him. God was with him. God was blessing him. And so if you will keep being faithful and obedient, God will keep blessing you. But you've got to have a thick skin. If you do anything worth doing, you're going to be criticized. If you achieve anything worth achieving, you're going to be criticized. I know families in the church, and they have worked their hardest to be faithful to each other in marriage because they come from backgrounds in which no one has been faithful. Everybody has been divorced multitudinous times. And I, I know some of these families, they, married couples, they tell me that when they face a challenge, the advice they get from all of their relatives is leave that person, divorce that person, be unfaithful to that person, break up, break up, break up, break up. Why? They want in that family's life what they have in their lives. You're going to have to develop thick skin to walk with God. You will be criticized. You will be opposed. As the blessing of God shows up in your life, there will be people who do not like it. When you have a child that is sick and you pray to God and God heals the child, there will be people jealous of that. Because when they pray, God doesn't hear, God doesn't answer. You've got to have a thick skin. If you're going to walk with Him and serve Him, you will be opposed. You will be criticized. But there is only one opinion that matters, and that is God's. One day we will stand before him and give an account. He's the judge. No man is the judge. No woman is the judge. God is the judge. And the, the New Testament talks about that. Jesus talked about that. People who love the praise of men more than the praise of God. See, what matters most to you? The opinion of friends or family or relatives or the opinion of God? You've got to decide. So they opposed him and he kept digging wells and God kept blessing him. Then we look down at verse 23, verse 23 here in Genesis 26. So he's there in the promised land. He goes from Gerar to Beersheba, which isn't that far away. Beersheba was a place that Abraham had spent some time at. In fact, many years. The Bible even talks about that he planted a tree there and that God blessed him there many years. In verse 24, that night the Lord appeared to him and said, and so we see a, a pattern here that repeats in Isaac's life just like his father. Abraham would obey God and then God would then appear to him and speak to him again. If you're in a dry place in your life spiritually where you do not feel like you are hearing from God and God is speaking to you, you need to go to the last point in time in your life when God asked you to do something and you didn't do it. 
He's always asking us to do things. Are there things in your life that he asked you to do that you have not done? Do it. So Isaac obeys, and then verse 24, God appears to him, and he says, I am the God of your father Abraham. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. I will bless you and will increase the number of your descendants for the sake of my servant Abraham. So God even makes it clear to him, you are going to enjoy blessing because of your father. You know, it's so easy for us as young people to be negative about parents and to criticize parents and to regret the fact that they're on Facebook and all those things. <laughs> but we are who we are because of our parents. We are where we are because of our parents. We're at whatever place in life we're at, we are because of our parents. And for some of us, our parents have been faithful to God and they've served God. And young people, there are some of you and your parents have served God so faithfully, some of the blessing is going to be manifest in your life if you'll serve God faithfully. Some of that seed, they've planted such good seed, it's going to bear a harvest in your life. You will be blessed because of the sake of your, your parents. So God makes it clear, Isaac, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to affirm this. You've been obedient, but a lot of it's because of your father, Abraham. Because you're a father. So look at what Isaac does here. Verse 25, Isaac built an altar there and called on the name of the Lord. There he pitched his tent and there his servants dug a well. And of course, again, they found water. So in this chapter, God speaks to him. God says, you stay, you go where I'm going to tell you to be. He does that. He obeys. He works. God blesses him incredibly. He faces opposition he remains faithful, he remains obedient, no matter how much opposition he faces. Then God appears to him again. He affirms the promise of Abraham to Isaac. And so then Isaac, he worships God. Like his father, he is a worshiper of God. So I said, young people, just it's great your parents live by faith. At some point, you have to determine to live by faith. In the same way, it's great that my parents worship God, but in my own life, I have to be a worshiper of God. He builds an altar here. In his day, this was how they worshiped. They would build an altar, and then they would do a sacrificial offering upon the altar. He would bring the fruit of his labor, his first fruit, his tithe to God, and offer it to God, and worship God there in that place. And he knew it was a good place because his father had been there. His father had, had worshiped there, and he knew it was a good place because they dug a well, and there, God blessed them there. He worshiped God. Then look at what happens. Verse 26, Meanwhile, Abimelech had come to him from Gerar. Abimelech is the Philistine king with the Huzeth, his personal advisor, and Phicol, the commander of his forces. Isaac asked him, Why have you come to me since you were so hostile to me and sent me away? Isaac had been so blessed by God. They said, You're too strong. You're too powerful. You're too blessed for us. Move away. Verse 28, They answered, We saw clearly that the Lord was with you. So we said, there ought to be a sworn agreement between us, between us and you. Let us make a treaty with you that you will not harm us just as we did not molest you, but always treated you well and sent you away in peace. And now you are blessed by the Lord. These are Philistines. They don't believe in the God of Abraham. They don't believe in the God of Isaac. They don't believe in Yahweh God. They worship pagan false gods, idols. They bow down to idols. They worship idols. They sacrifice their children to idols. They worship the pagan god Baal. And yet, they have seen Isaac blessed to such a tremendous degree. They come to him and say, you are blessed by the Lord. You are blessed by Yahweh God. Friends, this is how much God wants to show his goodness, his favor, his blessing and increase in your life. That everyone around you, whether they like you or hate you, agree with you or disagree with you, believe in God, believe in Jesus, believe the Bible or any of it, God wants to do such wonderful and amazing things in your life that everybody around you has to acknowledge it's not you, it's not your own effort, it's not your own labor, it is God, it is the goodness of God, it is the favor of God, it is the blessing of God, it is the increase of God. We are better witnesses when we will serve him and be faithful to him and be obedient to him in such a way that he can pour out such goodness and favor and blessing and increase and answers and miracles and good things in our lives that it is evident and plain. 
to everyone around us, it's God. God's at work in our lives. God's hearing our prayers. God's answering our prayers. God's showing up in our lives. That is a witness. Not having his favor is not a witness. Not having his increase is not a witness. Not ever having your prayers answered is not a witness. A true witness is when, like Abraham and like Isaac, you faithfully follow him, you faithfully serve him, you faithfully obey him. When he speaks to you, you listen. When he speaks to you, you do what he tells you to do. You do what his word tells you to do. And because of that, because of your faithfulness, as it says in Hebrews 11, 6, you then prove yourself qualified for him to reward you, to bless you, to increase you. The kingdom of God is about stewardship. And this is why there are people that they, they say they believe, they come to church, but they never experience his blessing and his increase. It is because they have not qualified themselves to receive it. He rewards those who earnestly seek him. Not those who don't seek him, not those who half-heartedly seek him. He rewards those who earnestly seek him. And that's the difference. One last thing. He's blessed before Genesis 26. We get to Genesis 26 and God takes the blessing in his life to a whole new level. He doesn't change. He doesn't change who he is. He remains the same Isaac. We see that even after all of this blessing, all of this increase, what does he do in verse 25? He remains the same Isaac. He keeps living like his father Abraham taught him to live. He keeps worshiping God. He keeps making offerings and sacrifices to God. Prosperity, blessing doesn't change who he is. He is faithful. He is generous. He is a good steward. He is somebody that God knows he can bless, he can increase, it won't change who he is, he'll keep being the same Isaac, he'll keep worshiping God, he'll keep making sacrifices, he'll keep being Isaac, the son of Abraham. God knows our hearts. God knows if when he blesses us, we'll then turn from him. God knows if when he blesses us, if we will become faithless. Part of experiencing all that God has for us is having a right heart before him, serving him, faithfully following him, and being the person who does not change because they get a prayer answered, being the person who does not change because God blesses them and increases them. I've seen it over the years. I've seen people get results with God and get prayers answered and be blessed by God, and then you stop seeing them at church. It doesn't last. The blessing doesn't last. The increase doesn't last. To continue to walk with him and to experience his favor, you have got to remain faithful and obedient. You've got to be trustworthy. So to experience increase in your life, obey God. Obey God. And as he blesses you and takes you from this level to the next level, Keep doing the same thing that worked at this level. Keep being faithful. Keep being obedient. And when he blesses you and takes you from this level to the next level, keep being faithful. Keep being obedient. Keep worshiping. Keep sacrificing. Keep serving him. Keep bringing your tithes and first fruits to him. Don't let blessing change who you are, how you act, how you conduct yourself. God is faithful. Amen. Amen. I hope the message this morning was a blessing and encouragement to you.